So, in case you missed it, it was February 19th of the year, God fucking knows, and I had a brand new pair of knockers, and I was travelling with some possibly French lopers on my way to Chinon, some place from which I could take over the world or something, I don't know. We got jumped by Robin Hood and his men to marry, but my retinue of voice actor rejects cleared them up like a line of cocaine off the back of the Pope. One of them said, Hi women, playing on helpless travellers, what has become of our homeland? Yeah, we're totally helpless travellers, aren't we? A bunch of guys wearing head-to-toe body armour, packing crossbows, swords, horses, and a dress with a nose-melting layer of manure caked all over it. We had twice their numbers, so if anything, we were fucking preying on them. They just wanted to live in their little house in the woods and play in their tree house, but no, we murdered them all without a second thought, and then we went to town on their house, slashing up their shelves, trampling their mail, shooting crossbow bolts into their sofa. I was like, hey guys, aren't we meant to be saving this fucking country from the apocalypse or something? No wonder this war lasted a hundred years. Half the time was just spent fucking headbutting sheds and dropping the people's elbow on some old lady's petunias. Eventually dragged the louds back onto the road and we got a move on. A load more wolves showed up and we even killed one. But luckily these wolves were chill as fuck and just walked off like nothing was happening. Didn't have a watch to check, but the only explanation was that it was 4.21, so at least I had the time of day. Crossed a bridge and there were more wolves, just as spaced out as the last bunch, staring off into the distance like they were trying to work out why the chicken crossed the road and why they didn't just fucking eat it when it did. Ended up in some village where more people were somehow convinced, without a single word, to give up everything and become a meat shield for some crazy teenager with a fruit knife and an ahistorical desire for an ice cold tinny. Interestingly though, they gave me the village bettering ram. What, your village doesn't have a bettering ram? Get with the times, bro, it's, uh, uh, who cares what fucking year it is, right? The point is, we took the ram and pushed it towards this Chinon place, hoping to trade it in for a discount on something more useful, like a pair of trousers. But actually, it turned out the road had been blocked by the forces of Ron Burgundy. How many time travellers were there in this bloody war? So we asked the ram to break their walls down, and somehow it did it all on its own. Hey, if I can be sent into the body of Joan of Arc, who's to say some bogan can't be sent into the body of a giant bit of wood with wheels attached? Ron's news jocks came at us with bows, but you can't fight wood with wood, so it didn't do shit. Then suddenly horses appeared and charged at poor little Roger Ram. Fuck! He rolled back from the attack so we could hack right at the slack jawed purple shack, so snap we had a knack for being on the right track. Snuck through the gate with no lack of strategy in my rack. Burgundy boy's days black, Joan of Arc coming in. Your shit like a Kodiak, Frenchy maiden talks smack, all other players whack. We were up in their base killing their houses, but some of us, my sacre bleu self included, were trapped outside when the door closed. No, our guys didn't know how to operate the door. Who do you think they were? These guys had the initiative of a paving slab and the charisma to match. Told them to bring down the enemy defense tower and they started chiseling away at the base. Just fucking open the door and kill the guy inside. Unless that motherfucker walled himself in there when they built the place, I'm pretty sure there's a ladder or some shit. Jesus Christ on a 12 foot pike. Makes me nostalgic for those body bags with faces drawn on them I used to command back in the old timeline. So we made it through the town and on the next road saw a load more baked lupines chilling like it was 1967, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't so don't get your hopes up of knowing the fucking year. We just snuck by and then some topless guy in bright yellow trousers fucking jive walked right past going the other way, beatboxing our buddy in the club getting tipsy and carrying his literal hoe. Wolves weren't having any of that shit, just mauled him up without a second thought. Decided to try and save him, since if we could stop the beasts ripping the trousers, they could be mine. After a confusing brawl in the bushes, it looked like he was alive, but he didn't have a word to say to us. Just picked up his empty basket of fucks and continued on his way. Sent a knight to chase him down and ask where he bought his outfit, but got nothing but a sassy stroll. All the knight reported back was that there was a Burgundian base behind us. Oh yeah, thanks mate, we just fucking stormed it. Guess you forgot in the 90 seconds that passed since then. Go back to night school before I knock the daylight out of you. Now, who's up for some bullshit? We went on to another French town down the road, and apparently it was an ambush. 
there were only like four or five guys, so I was like, yeah, whatever, just kill them for me, would you? I need to polish my nails, which for some reason I feel compelled to do these days. Suddenly, though, a fuck ton of purple pie keys appeared, and we were in trouble. Someone had mentioned something about heading to the river to escape, but fuck it, wasn't happening. Tried to fight my way out, but the potato sack I was wearing was about as durable as an alliance between Hitler and Gandhi. Dead. What well, was dead? Well, obviously not really. Guess that fucking spacesuit pulled me out of my body or something, since I was able to see that there were actually some boats we could jack a little further along. Guy was all, You have violated the contract, King Napoleon. You blah, 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 yeah, just send me back in time and I'll do it again, I'll get it, come on, do the thing, wave the magic briefcase or whatever. Pop, and there I was back at the ambush point, this time being a real creepy croc as I moved along the river. By the time the ambush got going, I was already whistling down the floating taxis, who for some reason were up for the whole gig. Guess my feminine charm worked on boats too. Then began a crazy parking party where we all tried to jump on board before the Burgundy Brigade showed up with a noise complaint. Shit part was each ship only had enough space for five people to stand face to face, or face to horse's arse in my case. A crazy jostle ensued in which a couple of stinkers were left on the shore, a nice distraction if anything, and the rest of us got away scot-free. We'd nicked all the boats in town, so Purple Patrol was stuck having to pay for swimming lessons if they wanted some of my maiden meat. So we sailed merrily down the stream for a bit, then jumped ashore on the other side of the river. And what did we find? Another French base. You mean to lead the French army? Such confidence I have not seen since this war began. Very well. You have six more soldiers, Jean de Maid. They assumed, reasonably, that since I had walked into town dressed as the mascot for the Marseille manure munches, that I wanted to lead the French army. Guess the last guy must have done the same. And they were very fucking proud of themselves to offer me up six guys to help. Six? A thousand? No, just six. Sure. I mean, do you know how many fucking people it took to fight the Hundred Years' War? Biggest source of casualties was troops fucking dying of old age while they waited for the action to start. And you seriously have the nerve to come up to me, grinning like you've just blocked the levee in a single splash, expecting me to be grateful that you've given me enough guards to, by current estimations, defeat two wolves, half a Burgundian, or one statistically insignificant portion of a Brit? I mean, I thought they were a bunch of wankers the moment I laid eyes on them, but they didn't have to go and post their wanker confirmation certificate to me first class. At least they had two sentient ballistas who could join my ram in the possessed by spirits of guys who got a little bit too friendly with a shaft of wood division. We pushed on and killed a few more particularly ambitious highwaymen. I mean, come on guys, wait five minutes and a topless guy in yellow trousers will probably just walk past. Why are you trying to jump the column of armoured troops with triple your numbers, siege machines and a pissed off looking chick with a sharpened teapot? Anyway, a voice suddenly rang out saying, Is it gone? Fire! No idea who said that, and it left us looking around wondering when this ion cannon was going to strike. But nothing happened of course, so we checked a little further down the road, and suddenly BANG! The Burgundy Brigands were bowling boulders to bash my bogan bodyguards. Looks like they had some haunted timber friends as well. We fought them off, but half my dudes were going apeshit on another treehouse they spotted. Clearly the true enemy here. I took them by the ear and convinced them that Operation Elevated Shack Whack was a failure and finally got on the road again. And actually, we arrived at Shinon a moment later. Not sure what was so great about this place if the enemy were right outside the gates, but rumour had it that they'd give me a load of shit if I could just waft my charming pong into the face of their leader, which was surprisingly a dolphin or something. The Chateau of the Dauphin. All the locals around town were shitting themselves over rumours that some creepy guy was hiding in the forest just beyond the wall, visible only by a shadow cast by some long object he was proudly brandishing. A local tapestry told the prophecy of this secretive stalker, known only as the Champion, and that he would one day break down the city wall with his mighty tool, known only as the Continental Breakfast. You didn't want to be around to see what happened after that, believe you me. But anyway, I went to see this land dolphin and made my best attempts to blag an army out of him. Uh, my wise and noble flippant overlord, I hope I will not come across as too humble when I say... My lord, I believe she has mistaken you for a dolphin. We are probably should not Silence! Finally, someone who sees into my soul, sees my true self. <laughs> 
knew not what silent conversation passed between the Dauphin and his would-be savior, but it was obvious that his majesty was in the same throne as we. So, uh, mate, you uh, get to the beach often? It's so hard, land walker, for the dastardly British are swarming like it's cop getting free night at the coral reef. What the fuck are you talking about, you aquatic ass? Look, here's the deal, all right? You give me all your shit, and I mean all of it. No questions asked, and in return I won't tell those guys from SeaWorld that you're here. Or maybe I'll kill all the poms for you while I'm at it. We dolphins are renowned for our intelligence, mon petit champignon. You think I would ever agree to such a deal? I'll throw in a bucket of fish. I'll uh, take that as a yes. Verbal contract, right everyone? You're my bitches from now on. Foot rub now, conquer the land tomorrow, and all the wine I can torpedo in between. All the Frenchies in the house say... Fucking noise does a dolphin make?